Hello everyone, I'm Colin Kinnett. In the past I've given you little tips on how to fix mistakes along the way, but today I'm going to dedicate this entire video to fixing woodworking mistakes. And I've got something new to show you as well, so stick around. Now there's something that happens to me still from time to time, and I've done this on purpose as you can see. I put a big screw in the end of a board, and of course the way to avoid that in the first place is to clamp that board before you put the screw in, and that almost will never crack then, but in this case it has. And one of the ways to fix that, you could use epoxy glue in there. I'm using this uh, Starbond Thin, and I know it's thin because it's marked on the bottle, and I really like that. And Basically, you just put a little bit of glue, well, in this case you put a, a fair bit because that's quite a nasty crack there, and put it all the way through, and especially on the end, all the way through like that. Don't pull that screw out until you've got some good, you know, a good amount of glue in there. Now I'm going to let that screw come out. And I'm also going to take a minute now and stabilize this, and I'm hoping, it's a pretty nasty crack there, but I'm hoping that now if I put a, a clamp on that and allow that to come together and try and put that screw back in, now hopefully... I've actually gone a little bit further. Now when I release that clamp, hopefully that glue is going to hold it. That was a pretty big crack for that glue to hold on to, but look at even that little bit and that glue has already held that crack steady. So one real quick way of fixing a crack from a screw or a nail. And here's another sort of repair that I'm going to show you. Sometimes you get a hole or maybe there's a knot or something in a piece of wood and you can take that to your drill press or, or even your hand drill and cut a hole in there and I'm going to show you the right way and the wrong way of filling those holes. So let's go over to the drill press. So I'm going to start off by drilling two holes and they're going to be five eighths of an inch in diameter and the reason is because I have some 5 8 dowel but I also have a 5 8 uh, plug cutter and I want to show you the difference on what these look like for filling holes. Okay, and we're back to the workbench, and you can see that I've just cut off a little piece of that dowel, and that's what that would look like, and I'm going to use that in one of them, and the other part is I'm going to use the plug, so I'm just going to tap that out of there. There we go. Now typically we would try and use the same wood, but here's the big difference. This is end grain I'm going to be putting in, and this is edge grain, and there's a big difference in how it's going to absorb a finish. So when we put this in, now that one's a little bit loose, so that would have to get glued in, and this one I know is a little bit tight, but I'm going to put that in anyway and just kind of tap that in. And you're going to still, still you're going to be able to see the difference here, even though this one is a little bit on the loose side here. I'm just going to take the top off that, and you'll see instantly what a difference it makes. Now, as you know, when you put that plug in, now that's the dowel, and look at the dowel, it's ed, end grain in there, so it's soaking up all of that finish, and it really looks like a patch instantly, but watch the other one. See how it tends to blend now? Of course it's rolling around in there because it's a little bit loose, so there needs to be a little bit of work there on that. I don't know if the plug cutter or the dowel is the problem, but look at the difference in that. And this obviously looks like a patch, but this one here, if that was a little bit tighter, that would just blend in like nothing. Now for the next thing I want to show you, 
this lovely piece of live edge lumber, uh, but look at the nasty knot hole and crack in it. And I'm going to show you how to fix that. What I'm going to do today is something a little bit different. And what I want to tell you is that when you have something like this, don't try and hide it. This is something, use this to make this a feature rather than trying to disguise it or hide it. So in this case, we're going to make it look a little bit darker. And that's quite fine. When we see knots, very often they're darker. In the past, I've showed you this Tight Bond product. I love this product. It's a CA glue, but it's got a black dye in it. It's perfect for little holes like that, little cracks. Uh, but for something like this, these great big ones, I'm going to use something today called Ecopoxy. It's a fairly new product, and it comes in a little package like this, and there's instructions in there as well. Uh, and basically what you do is you just simply you can see it's two parts. There's a, an A and a B and you just squeeze them together and they will mix together. There it goes. And I'm just going to keep pushing that in there. And you can see how that's getting milky in there. Now what I want to do with this, I want to use this and I'm going to sort of massage it for two minutes, two to three minutes until it's all really well mixed. So when I come back, this will be all nicely mixed up. Okay, I've been mixing this product now for over three minutes. You cannot over mix this. There's no heat generated by this that I can feel at the moment. And as you can see, this company also makes some dyes that go with this and with some other products I'm going to be showing you later on uh, on another video. But this is all ecologically friendly. There's virtually no smell to it and the reason I'm putting it into this little cup here is I want to add some color to it so that I blend it a little bit closer to what I want this knot to match color wise. And there's our finish. I've let this sit overnight now, and you can see how hard it is. I should tell you, never throw away your mixing pot, uh, because not only does it tell you when your product is uh, hard, uh, but it also helps you find the properties. Uh, and this, the properties of this material, uh, as you can see, it's, it's a little bit brittle, but it has a little bit of give to it. And that's perfect for wood because when this wood moves and expands a little bit, it, this material is not going to chip and crack like some things. You can see it's sort of flexible. So that's really good. Now we can do all sorts of things that you can see I'm using my chisel we can chisel it we can plane it we can sand it there's all sorts of things so I'm just going to take a few minutes and do just a little bit of a cleanup so that you can see a little bit better where the epoxy fill was uh, and where the wood is there I've done a little bit of planing a little bit of sanding and you can see how because it's darker and this live edge is a little bit on the dark side how they sort of tend to complement one another a little bit so uh, don't be afraid of things like this use them as features uh, and this is just one product you can use in your toolkit to help you save a big piece of wood like this uh, and be able to use it by filling it with something like this epoxy filler well, there's just a sampling of some of the things that you can use to help fix different woodworking problems that occur. And there's lots, lots more, and I'm going to be covering some of those in upcoming episodes. If you haven't already subscribed, I invite you to do that so you don't miss one of those episodes. I'm Colin Cadet for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.